dumb and dead, and apparently not without his defenses. Metal gates had moved into place during the battle, locking Lily and company within the inner sanctum. Sorry. Speaking of which, the Dryad is still imprisoned. Her beauty is exquisite. Well, they wouldn't want to admit it, but even more so than her south. And eerily beautiful, despite being caged, saddened, and weakened for who knows how many days. Lady Arabeth bid Lily to treat her with respect, and Lily has no reason not to oblige. I have prayed to the Great Oak for a savior. Are you to be it? Shall I be freed at last to rejoin my tree? Or of course, this is the Black Lake Dryad. I think Lily wants more details about her imprisonment. Of course, Lady Arabeth has instructed Lily to treat this Dryad well. And of course, she's going to oblige. Sadly, yes. This servant wandered the strange city after fleeing the hard battle. I did not know where to turn and long so for my oak. Meldon and Falmia brought me to this place. He meant to, to hurt me and make a cure for a great sickness. I did only what I could and charmed him. It was almost worse, however, to bear his obsession. <laughs> Please release me, Elvin, my friend. I've been away from my oak far too long. Yeah, I think Lily would like her to first go to Lady Arabeth. You need not worry. All you have to do is take a lock of my hair to your Lady Arabeth. I give it gladly, Elven One. I'd hoped I could do more, but I'm very weak now. It saddens me to see the sickness in your people, but now that you have my hair, I'm no longer really needed here. May this servant of the oak be allowed to leave. I miss my tree, so... Yeah, I think she's still going to offer to escort her to <laughs> Lady Arabeth. You are the most kind to offer, Alvin One, but I need only reach the nearest tree. The wizard who came to my grove said a single tree would return me home. I shall never forget you. If we meet again, I pray that I shall be able to reward you properly. All right. Bidding Lily a farewell. Only rewarded with gratitude. Well, they shouldn't be surprised. Eliza there, a fairy queen, offered no better. But how has she survived this long? Dryads are mystically bound to a single enormous oak, and will die within hours if they stray more than a few hundred yards away. She must be carrying an acorn bestowed with an acorn of four travel spell to sustain the link with her oak that would have allowed her to travel in the first place. One reagent for a cure to the wailing death recovered. A lock of the Water Davian Dryad's hair. It doesn't seem very remarkable. It's summertime, so it's naturally green as oak leaves. Had it been full, it would have been a golden red, or winter, a deathly white. Lily's just glad that her hair doesn't change color according to season, or mood for that matter, or at all. Black suits her just fine. Yeah, actually this seems vaguely familiar. I remember some type of a problem where after a journal update, all these, so many entries would highlight like this for seemingly no reason. Which remember it was kind of a pain because unless you cleared them, there's no way to know what would update in the future. All right. Lily is curious about Meldon's magic circle too. She can't quite discern its purpose, except that it must have been used for his teleportation. No matter. There is still the matter of one last metal door. His private quarters, perhaps. Maldinen's master bedchamber. In stark contrast to the salacious sorcerer's suite above. Respectable quarters with fine furnishings and elegant decor. 
no less than what Lily would have expected. And she's also expecting trickery in the locks guarding his personal effects. A job for the artful dodger. With a little help from his mistress, she focuses on a piece of woven fabric in her pouch and casts a resistance spell for bones. Devious devices dodged, Lily Knox as only a wizard can, and just once is certain to do. Too easy. And too disappointing. The sorcerer seems to have nothing locked away that one might expect a sorcerer to have. As Lily becomes increasingly frustrated with the plunder from Melvinin's master bedchamber, she informs Sharwin that they'll be plundering the remainder of the sanctum. Going into her increasingly familiar speech about Inspector General Black, rights of seizure, arcane property, and the investigation, Lily's speech is interrupted by a rattling noise as Little Red is excitedly shaking something she's found. A set of table dice, also known as backgammon. It's a fine set, too. A polished board, ivory dice, fine leather dice cups, and an ironwood case. Little Red asks if they can take a break and maybe even play, but Lily refuses to even think of it. Perhaps later. Lily finishes her speech regarding the Lord's Alliance Office of Academic Affairs Continuing Investigation, though it falls on deaf ears. There's yet another metal door, though it's likely to keep people out from the other side and not the other way around. Yet another resistance spell for the intrepid explorer. Oh wow. Alright. Here's Melvinin's apprentice. Probably with a summon. Alright. It's unexpected. Again, we need to get everybody in there. Mouths. All right, crew. Let's take them down. Hopefully that'll interrupt him. Uh, all right, magic missile. Mouths. The only thing more laughable than sorcerers are their apprentices. Lily can't imagine what they do all day. They have no spellbooks to study, and they have no need to study scrolls or to even memorize spells. They must sit around all day just toying with common barbaric weapons, like the flail found on the one here, which explains why they all seem to be trained with him. Unlike a self-respecting wizard. Ridiculous. Melded in baboons. Some charm and a bit gifted, but still baboons. A robe of acid resistance. Perfect. The green robe will complement her red one quite nicely. 
Of course, she won't be satisfied until she's acquired a complete set for all elemental domains. Which means she's still looking for robes of cold and electrical resistance. Why? It's the principle. She imagines it's prudent to carry a robe for every occasion. One last devious mechanism, and no resistance spells memorized. Luckily for Bones, his mistress is willing to contribute a potion of bless to his dodgy endeavors. He's grateful for it, even when it comes spilled onto the floor like so much milk. One last door, and likely one last surprise. Alright, fire beetles. Or one last disappointment, yet more storage. While searching the crates and chests, Sharwin, thinking of the table dice back in Meldon's master bedchamber, asks Lily what game she preferred to play when she was younger. At first, Lily gives the Black Lake Bard a perplexed look, then dissolves into a rather stern countenance as Lily claims to have had neither the time nor luxury of playing games. Little Red almost regrets asking the question, as her mistress goes on about having to study and train in the art, from dawn to dusk and beyond in candlelight. Ten days a ride, three rides a month, twelve months a year. Lily's testimonial is cut short when she discovers an enchanted greatsword. The massive blade weighs as much as five short swords. Well, I can't imagine how anyone could bear to carry it all day, let alone swing the weapon. Luckily, they have the magic bag. She now has half of the ingredients for one of Marek's recipes for blades both sharp and true. Not that she wants a Harbringer Ken greatsword for herself, but if she can find some adamantite, it could prove to be profitable. She doesn't bother to continue about how hard she studied and trained in her youth. It's not even necessarily true, but she's repeated it so often, it might as well be. Finally, a break. Lily nods and smiles a little red, who snatches the ironwood set and shakes it, beaming at the opposition. Sharwin lays out the board on the floor, and the ladies sit across from each other and play one, two. Lily loses track. A seemingly countless number of games. Little Red can never seem to win despite Lily even trying to let her. At last, Lily calls an end to the games, reminding the rather good-spirited but pouting loser that they'll have a proper break after reporting to Lady Arabeth and celebrating with the Serlunian special van. Lily warns Little Red as they're about to use the Stone of Recall and so be at the whim of the twisted twins of Tear to hold on to her leathers before gripping the folds of her own gown and using the stone.